So in this video, I'll be showing you how to find the derivative of tan x. All right. So if you're given y, if you're given that y is equal to tan x, and you have to find the y over the x. Now, before now, we've said that the derivative of tan x is sec squared x. But how exactly do we get that answer? Now, first things first, the first thing to note is that tan x is the same thing as saying sin x all over cosine x, that's cos x, right? So this is the first thing you should have in mind when trying to differentiate tan x. And of course, if this is true, then we can say that if y is equal to tan x, it means that y is still equal to sin x all over cosine x or cos x. Now, having said this, it means that our question becomes y equal to sin x all over cosine x, which is the same thing as tan x. At this point, the question will now be, which of the methods of differentiation do we use? Now, if I look at this, you can see that I have a numerator sin x being divided by a denominator cos x. And we said whenever you have two terms di dividing themselves, they would have to use quotient rule. For quotient rule, we said the, num the numerator here would be u, while the denominator here would be v. So from here, we can say that let u, let u be equal to sine x, which is my numerator. If I differentiate the numerator, du over dx, if I differentiate sine x, what you get is cos x, all right? All of this has already been explained in our previous classes, all right? So you can check our, our previous video on the differentiation of trigonometric functions, all right? I'll leave a link to that video in this video description, all right? So you can check the video description to get a link to this concept. Also, let v be equal to... Now, from here, v is my denominator here, which is simply cos x. So, let v be equal to cos x. I will have that dv all over dx is equal to, if I differentiate cos x, what you get is minus sine x. Again, we've already explained this in a previous video. So, you can check it up in the video description. All right, I'll leave a link to it. Now, for this question, I will now use quotient rule. So, I will say using using quotient using quotient rule now from quotient rule we know that dy over dx dy all over dx is equal to v du over dx minus u dv all over dx all divided by so divided by v squared so all over v squared. And this will be equal to, so let's get them. This is equal to, first things first, v. Coming back to this, we can see that v is equal to cos x. So v, that's equal to cos x into du over dx. That's this. du over dx, as you can see here, is cos x. That becomes cos x into cos x. Next up, I have minus u. That becomes minus. What exactly is u? If we check here, you can see that u is equal to what's there? Sin x. That becomes minus u, and u is sin x, so minus sin x into dv dx. dv dx from here, as you can see, is negative sin x. That's minus sin x, so minus sin x. So what I have here is u, which is cos x, or what I have here is v, which is cos x, du dx, which is cos x, minus u, which is sin x, and then dv dx, which is minus sin x. Right. So all over, all over, my formula here says v squared. V is um, cos x, so it becomes cos x squared. That's equal to cos x all squared.
that's v squared. All right, so proceeding with this, what do we have? Um, this is equal to, this is equal to, coming to this, cos, cos x, multiplying cos x gives you what is called cos squared x, right? It's called cos squared x. So I have this. Next up, negative multiplies negative. So minus times minus, I have plus, so it becomes plus. Now I'm left with just sine x, multiplying sine x. Sine x multiplying sine x gives you sine squared x. This all divided by terminator. So all divided by, I now have cos x all squared. Cos x all squared. Okay, let me just leave this as cos x all squared. So this becomes um, cos x all squared. Leaving this this way. All right. But we know something, but there's a trick function that says that cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. This is a trick function. That's cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. And if this is true, that means my numerator, which is cos squared x plus sine squared x, becomes 1. So I'll now have 1 all over my denominator is now cos x all squared so at this point here i'll have to separate these terms now in separating these terms i would have this as one all over since i'm having cos x all squared i can take the first cos x first so one over cos x multiplied by one all over another cos x now if i multiply numerators one times one gives you one Okay, cos x times cos x gives you cos x all squared. But again, but again, there's also a trick function called sec x, right? Sec x. Now, sec x in full is second. The word sec in full simply means second of x. And from what we have here, we know that sec of x is equal to the inverse of cos x. All right so sec x means inverse of cos x if that is true if i have the inverse of cos x which is 1 over cos x multiplying the inverse of cos x so this gives you sec x multiplying sec x so hence this is equal to sec x multiplying sec x now when sec x multiplies sec x this will be this will be equal to sec x all squared an alternative form of writing this becomes equal to sec squared x so this is the value of dy all over dx all right so this is how we get dy over dx when y is equal to tan x all right all right so if you enjoyed this video please make sure you like this video all right leave a comment tell us if you enjoyed the video also don't forget to subscribe if it's your first time please subscribe to this channel and of course share this video to your friends so that they can also learn right i have a complete playlist on on calculus from limits and continuity to differentiation to the application of differentiation to integration to the application of integration and even differential equation all right so go to the playlist section and then search for any of them and you get a complete tutorials on each of the aforementioned topics. Thank you and see you in the next class.